Scott. Question for Meaty. In view of the fact that in Australia, Muslim couples have a much higher birth rate than the rest of us, is it not possible that in a couple of generations, Australia could have a Muslim majority who vote in Sharia law? Oh. Further, if so, is it not possible that sex could develop, sex, uh, Sunnis and Shias, who begin bombing and shooting each other and turning currently the best country into the world like another war-torn Middle Eastern country? Um, this is not Islamophobia, this is Sharia law phobia. Okay. Um, I think there was a lot more than uh, Sharia law in there. Um, <laughs> let me just try and unpack your point. First off, uh, I know Malcolm Turnbull said over the weekend that Australian law takes precedence over the laws of mathematics in this country, but I'm no mathematician. No, there's no way that the Muslims are going to form a majority in Australia in the next generation or two. I believe it's 600,000 or something in the recent census out of 24 million Australians. So you don't have to worry about Muslims coming in, uh, taking over Australia, although Australian Muslims are doing a very good job. I've been so, Mehdi, where do you think where, where do you, this week. is? is where not, you're not unfamiliar with these kind of, of uh, questions in the United <laughs> States. Where does it come from, this fear? I think the fear comes from many, many areas. I think partly it comes from, of course, what we've been discussing, terrorist attacks. It would be mad to not talk about uh, the fear that terrorism provokes um, and the absurd and horrific things that Muslims do in the name of, some Muslims do in the name of Islam, as John has already pointed out. But a lot of it, unfortunately, does come from media, social media these days. Uh, misinformation, the gentleman here, I'm not sure how much you're aware of uh, the differences between Sunnis and Shias. Are you aware of the differences between Sunnis and Shias? Uh, vaguely. I, I know they're at each other's throats. That's, that's the main thing. I know. That's, and that's, they're, they're all Muslims. True. I'm Shia and my best friend is Sunni. <laughs> well, so I think it's, it's not true. I mean, and, 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 in, in, a global, in a global context, there is a kind of truth to that, isn't there? I mean, Iran... No, is... there's not, there's not, sorry, sorry, there's not a truth to that, actually. There's a geopolitical game in the Middle East where one Shia majority country mm. and one Sunni majority country do want to kind of dominate the region. Mm. There's no doubt about that. Mm. But the idea that this is some kind of lazy Sunni-Shia split... In fact, in a country like Iraq, you mentioned war-torn countries in the Middle East. Iraq, a country torn apart by war, partly by its horrific dictator, partly by a Western coalition that involved Australia that went in to make it more war-torn, and today is riven by sectarian splits that didn't really exist before 2003. Pre-2003, Sunnis and Shias got married in Iraq, had sushi children, mixed children, right? <laughs> so let's not... And today, I'm sorry to say, a lot, of, a lot of the sectarian divisions in the Middle East are geopolitical pushed by Muslims. A lot of them are pushed by foreign wars and foreign occupations, I'm sorry to say. So you don't have to worry. Sunnis and Shias, I have many friends who are Shia, many friends who are Sunni. We're not all at each other's throats. Please don't believe everything you read about us. Come and talk to us, meet us, make Shia and Sunni friends, and then you'll see that you don't have to worry about about Sharia law or Sunnis or Shia. OK, well, let's quickly go back to Roger. He wants to make a point and then I we'll... I must say, Mehdi, your point is far very good. I must say, though, that when you look at statistics and compound interest, which is a parallel case, numbers, when, when there's a certain increase every year, numbers skyrocket to very large numbers. So it's not quite as cut and dried as we would like to believe that there cannot eventually be a Muslim majority, I think. OK, I mean... I don't think that's the case. And let me just say one thing, because we're talking about this in a way as if a Muslim majority would be the worst thing in the world. I don't think Australia will have a Muslim majority, but having spent a week here with a lot of Australian Muslims, there are some amazing Australian Muslims, doctors, nurses, engineers, accountants. I mean, Australian Muslims working okay. in the Prime Minister's office. They're doing great work in your country. Let's, They're doing great work. Let's hear it. Thank you very much. Let's hear